Good morning. Oh my gosh, this light from the computer is crazy on my glasses. Here we are. <laughs> Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, all of whatever holiday is for you. Merry, merry to that. Let me see, I wanna see something here. Well, maybe I don't. We'll just leave it at that for a second. So how was your holiday? I hope it was very well and it found you happy and healthy and well. And if not, and you were feeling depressed and lonely and alone with all that's been going on this year, I'm sending healing prayers to you from my heart to yours. And I just wish you a very great, definitely rest of this year, which is happily only a few days and on to next year 2021 so cheers to that and welcome to grandma's on a mission this morning hi my name is shelly jean and i want to thank you so much for being here i love it when we can have our saturday morning talks and uh i just want to say how much i appreciate you so i had a very happy and wonderful um holiday per se i don't know what facebook says has about you know, they're very picky about words. And so I don't want to get kicked off or not have this shown because I just, everybody has a different, different meaning for their holidays and ours is Christmas. And I do believe in Christ. I do believe in the rising of Jesus at Christmas, the birth of Jesus. And, you know, my daughter in law, they, they believe in a whole different, you know, a uh, set of beliefs about them. And it's so fun. And I love learning about that for them. And, and uh, I really appreciate that. And I respect where they're at and I respect where you are. And I just love to hear the stories. Like I love the stories of what your beliefs are about Christmas. And it's just so fun to, you know, really be open to learning new and exciting things about, you know, what that is for you. So feel free to drop a line below and let me know what your belief is. And, you know, share with me how your holiday went if you are feel so inclined to do so. I would love to know. And not everybody has the best Christmases either. So this year was a really, really great one for us. I get to spend it with my two uh, adult children. And well, they're not kids anymore, but you know, I don't care how old we get. We still think of our kids as no matter how old they are, they're our kids. And so with them and my grandkids, and it was beautiful, it was peaceful. You know, and it was just fun to see the excitement on my grandkids' faces when they were opening their gifts. And I live with my daughter and my my uh, other grandson, her her son. And yesterday, Santa visited, and and uh, he had brought some really, you know, great gifts too that my grandson wanted. And so it was fun opening gifts with him Christmas morning and seeing the look of surprise and awesome wonder on his face and. Yeah, you know, he has got a favorite little guy. His little elf comes alive every year once the tree gets put up. And his name is Lippy. That's his that's his personal elf that Santa sent to him. And this kid is just amazing. He he's not one of these he doesn't get in trouble. He doesn't like arguments. He's such a, a big heart. He's so soft hearted. And so and it's wonderful to spend and see him grow. And so Lippy is just around here just to bring the magic of, of, you know, the holiday to our home. And so every morning we'd get up and go look for Lippy and find out where Lippy landed and see what he was up to. Sometimes he'd eat cookies and sometimes it was candy canes. And, you know, he never got into any big mischief as we hear from the elf on the shelf. And, you know, I just really don't believe in that because our, our, our little guy doesn't do that. He doesn't get into trouble. And uh, when he... When he hurts, you know it. Like his heart is just crushed, and I could not even imagine placing an elf on, you know, anywhere that would cause chaos or create a, oh my gosh, you know, I can't get in trouble. Like, I don't know. It's just not my belief about that. So that's what I'm talking about. What is your belief around things? Like, let's hear some of what you have to say. I would love to know. It would be really, really fun to hear what you have. You know, and again, my heart goes out to you if you had a really bad Christmas. So I'm going to share with you. So this is kind of, you know, this is in two different places. So I want you to know that you're not alone. You are not alone. 
you know, I, I every single Saturday I talk about my son, my son that passed away, and this is this is another one. You know, we spent Christmases without him. And hey, Peggy, nice to have you here. And we spent Christmases without him, obviously. And you know, every year is different. And you know, I have my moments every holiday where I get really, really, you know, crushed and just miss him i miss him all the time but you know at the holidays it's just really really challenging you know sometimes to really get through a day sometimes and you just really want them there so badly and you just want to give him a hugs and you know i know he knows how much i love tim and love him still dearly and i know that his spirit is with me always he's around here all the time <laughs> in fact uh, book just flew off my shelf and I'm not even joking when I say that like it literally okay that was that was weird so uh, probably down here with us now that kind of, that gave me like I have thrill bumps everywhere Woo! okay so back to that and I know Peggy I know that she's had her own challenges with family and and health challenges of her own and I love and, and see how strong she is in getting through the things that she goes through. We all have our own stuff. We all have it. And so when I lost my son nine years ago, like I said, every Christmas is completely different. There was a period of time when I was really lost and just didn't know what to do. I didn't even know how to respond to anything or react to anything or... I just had no, I had no clue how I was even getting through the day. I just did it. I just got up, I took a breath, I took a step and I just got into the day and just really dug into, you know, uh, YouTube videos and books and people mentorship and, you know, really uplifting, inspiring people and got myself surrounded by those that can really, you know, just help to pull me up. And that's, you know, one of my biggest you know, uh, suggestions for you is to do something that makes you feel good. You know, don't keep yourself stuck in a place of of wallowing where it's not a it's not a good place. You need to get yourself out of that dark hole. You got to do whatever it takes because there's a solution. So, this year, my aunt my aunt had passed away this year in a in a in this is a living center. And it was so quick and so unexpected. And so I have my cousins that are going through this Christmas, you know, without their mom and dad, because their dad had passed away, I want to say 11 years ago, because my son passed away nine. I can't remember if it was 10 or 11. But here's what I do remember about that Christmas. I remember that Thanksgiving, we went to my aunt and uncle's house, because that's where we always went. And we had spent our last Thanksgiving with my uncle knowing that my uncle was dying of cancer that year. And I had to say my goodbyes to my uncle then. And it was so hard. Like I couldn't even, I couldn't even have conversations with him because I just didn't, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to feel about, I mean, I knew how I was feeling about the situation. I knew that it was devastating. I knew that it was the last time I'd ever see my uncle again. And you know, and, and, and it was tough because he's sitting at the kitchen table and we're, you know, we had a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner and he's sitting with us and, you know, having these great conversations. And my uncle always loved telling me these stupid jokes. Like they're so bad. And so he had to put in his last couple jokes for me. And, you know, I left and I just whispered, I love you so much in his ear and we buried, well, I was there, but my cousins had to bury their father on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day. So from Thanksgiving to Christmas, they had lost their dad and they buried him on Christmas Day. And on that Christmas Day, when my family went, because we live in Minneapolis and they live in Sioux Falls, and we went to the funeral, that same day, my son was living in Sioux Falls at the time, my oldest, my Jesse, and he was really, really sick and he ended up in the hospital. And his dad had a, had, was having heart problems and ended up in surgery and had three stints put in on Christmas day, all on the same day. 
So I was at my uncle's funeral. I get a phone call. Oh, thank you, Peggy. And uh, I get a phone call f at the funeral that my that my kid's dad was going into surgery and emergency surgery for to have his heart um, to have these stents put in. And so I, I didn't even get to finish being at my uncle's funeral and grieving for my uncle when we had to go to the hospital to see my son and his dad. It was the the craziest Christmas ever. And also then the roads weren't even that great that day either. We ended up, you know, after we found out that the, my kids' dad was gonna be great and we made sure that we saw him in recovery and his eyes were open and he was talking to us. And we went and saw my son in his other room and said, you know, we had said all our goodbyes at the funeral and we uh, came back to Minneapolis and nothing, nothing was open. We hadn't eaten. We didn't have Christmas dinner. We didn't have any of that. We had pizza from a get and go. That was our Christmas dinner on that Christmas day. And I will never forget it. That was one of the most memorable Christmas. So what I'm saying to you is you, you just got to do what you got to, you, you just got to do what you got to do. And you just got to keep moving forward and you go to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. And you just, I, and I know these times are tough. We're living in it too. We have, you know, our own financial stuff going on over here and you know what, but we're finding solutions and we're looking for ways to make things happen. And we, we just, my daughter to her faith and her faith and her, her brother's faith our things will just work out mom it'll be okay we'll we'll make it we always do and we always have and so i really love that you know when i hear these things come from my daughter that you know it, it, that thing anything is possible and it's true and you know whatever your belief is about that too i do believe in miracles i believe that you know my mom this year we thought was covid positive too and she we didn't even think she was going to make it through uh, a week or two weeks of uh, what she was going through and it was pneumonia and come to find out it was she was COVID uh, she actually was negative but she had pneumonia and we didn't think she was gonna make it and you know my mom has dementia and she's you know for she's doing well for having dementia but it's like watching it's like watching her die like I'm watching her die and it'll be twice that I'm going through this and it was like the same with my son it was like Oh, I don't want to cry through this. You know, it was like, oh, just let me catch my breath here a minute. So it was like watching, we were watching him die. So we were grieving while he was alive. It was the same with my uncle. It was the same thing going on with my mom because my mom can't even have a conversation, you know? So she... You know, but she has her moments. Like yesterday was awesome. I could tell that she was having a, a really good day because she would be smiling and giggling and she could say yes and no. And I'd ask a question and she'd say, I don't know. And it was really good, strong, I don't know. And then she tried to, you know, have a conversation and just came out like blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh. And then she laughed though. So, you know, she, she knew and so it's moments like that that I just cherish as I know that they're few and far between so you just gotta you just gotta make the best of what you have at the time that you have just like Christmas Eve I was supposed to see her on Christmas Eve day well we had we had a blizzard here and we have we've had the mildest winter well we had snow in October which was really really crazy for us and the snowfalls were significant. And then November and December have been really super mild. And so when I say miracles, everyone dreams of a white Christmas here because that's where we live. We live in the Midwest where snow is part of our part of us. And we had a blizzard and we got our white Christmas. So <laughs> tell me miracles don't happen. They happen. I did take a drink here real quick. Oh goodness. Oh, thank you guys. Sorry about that. It just comes when it comes. <laughs> and 
And tears are healing, so feel free to cry. Do whatever you have to do, too, because that's what tears are about. They're healing tears. They're, you know, they're tears grieving for, you know, your loved ones. You know, I know, right, is so another, um, one of my friends and who's also a client of mine, her, she had just made a statement, and and uh, I want to read it. She says she took her loved one into bed tonight with a normal night small talk because he had had a stroke and he's you know it's really hard for him to have conversations although he can have conversations and he's doing really really well and I'm really really surprised at, at how far he's come in such a short time and this just shows the character of this guy and the you know tenacity that he has to really want to walk really well and talk and you know, he has a very large family. They have five daughters. They all have kids, and and they, it's a huge family. And they're just so, you know, there's so much that goes on over there. And my friend is just amazing at being caretaker and husband, and you know, mom and grandma and all these things. And she's just a powerful lady. Absolutely love her. And so she was tucking her husband into bed and he, he rolled over and looked at her and he said, you know, I might be gone soon. And they've been having some challenges, some health challenges this week. And it's really set them both back and it really set her back and her heart just hurts and I can feel it. And there's, you know, all I can do is just be there for support. And you know, if there's anything that you can do for someone in your life, it's just be there for support. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to feel bad about anything. Just be there. That's all you have to do is just be, just be, be a friend, you know, or, you know, relative or whatever, whatever you are to that person. Just be that. You don't have to go and be above and be able to do anything extravagant. Just, just be there. Just be a light source for them and a smile and a hug means the world. And anyway, so they had gone to bed and he had rolled over and looked at her and he said, I might be gone soon. And she said, why do you say that? And he said, I don't know. And then he said, um, he said, but I am here for eternity. And then she said, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And he said, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Only God knows when we go home. But it was sad but sweet at the same time. Because she remembers being with her daddy, the, the, uh, the, great, the great one, and saying the same thing. But love you all and have a, and then she said, just love you all and have a blessed night. And here's for a brighter year in 2021. And they know, like my son knew too. My son, and you can tell, and there's a, there's a, a situation, or not a situation, there's an experience that happens when you're watching your loved one pass on into the next life, if that's what you believe to. I believe that they that are, that we are eternal, that we are, you know, we are just a, a spiritual being in this body, and we do just pass on to, you know, wherever it is we go after this. But I do believe, though, that, you know, the universe is, is huge and that we are surrounded by angels and that my son is one of them my uncle is one of them my my brother I have a brother that committed suicide too in 1989 I believe he's around I have all these my aunt I, I have all these wonderful amazing people that I there's been a lot of death in my life and the, and I can tell you there are moments that I get really freaked out too like I like I'm thinking like some if something happens to my grandkids or something to my daughter and or to my son and I got to be really really careful about that and not really slip down that dark hole because it's easy to do because you know that you've just been handed so much you know life experiences that aren't really you know maybe all that great and so you tend to think that that's the way life is and it isn't there really is a lot of greatness and I'm very very grateful for every single day that I'm alive and that I get to experience and have with my family my friends my Facebook friends and you know Instagram all our social media like I so love and appreciate that and I have so many people that uplift and inspire me and just pour greatness into me and I am so honored about that and I want to do the same for you I want you to know that you are not alone that I am a grandma's on a mission and I am here to be here for you and that again that you're not alone if you're going through an addiction if you're going through grief you're going through Whatever it is you're going through, I know people that can help you get through whatever it is you're going through. So I don't ever want you to feel like you're alone because we do feel that sometimes. Like I said, I went through that. I feel like, you know, I have a pastor friend who said, Shelly, you remind me of Job. And 
I said, Job, what? Who is Job? And he said the book, the Bible, the book of Job. And so I read the, I, I went back and I read it. And I said, I came back to my pastor friend and I said, there is no way I'm Job. I said, I don't believe in God like Job believed in God. And, and then, in fact, I walked away from God. I walked away from everything because I was angry. And I said, how can you just take and rip everything away from me? My identity, my family, my son, you know, all these wonderful beautiful people in my life you just ripped them all away from me so how can I believe in you and I did that I walked away and so I do believe in miracles because what happened was is I I started just giving myself the option to at least put my foot back in a little bit and to open my heart at least a little bit to allow myself to hear the word to hear what other churches had to say, what other pastors had to say, what other people had to say. And just finding my place again, even with God, like we, whatever that is for you. And it took me a long time. And now I just, every day, I just thank God every single day for every minute that he gives me on this earth and gives me with my family, my friends, my, my social media friends and family. It's, it's truly a gift and an honor for that. And when you can really find, even in your darkest moments, something to be grateful for, and I know, I know, I know that it's tough. You, you just got to do it. Just write it down. Whether you believe it or not, just write it down. Even the gift of seeing, the gift of hearing and smelling and being able to eat and being able to walk, those are major, major gifts. And hey, Pam, nice to have you here. There, so those are major, major gifts. And we take these things for granted even our beating hearts we take them for granted and while other people are losing theirs and they're losing loved ones I have an experience going on right now that I'm not at liberty to talk about and it's very very um, heartbreaking for everybody it's another you know life that's being taken from us way too soon and from a family and all we can do is just send out prayers and be supportive and love on them. And so I just ask for, you know, love and prayers for them too. And, and, uh, you know, and, and again, anything is possible. We just don't know what we don't know sometimes. And sometimes it's having that, that faith. And, you know, I love Hallmark movies. I absolutely love them. And I was watching a movie last night and it so resonated and it, the, one of the things that they were talking about, it was talking about faith. So we don't see, we don't see love, but we love. We don't see hate, and we can hate. And we don't see a lot of these things that we do, but we do it because we just believe that we do, that we can, right? So, because it was, it was Santa related. It's like, how can, how can you believe, or like, who believes in Santa? Well, if you believe in love and you believe in, and who believes in Jesus? So if you believe in love and you believe in faith, or you believe in, in different things that you cannot see, then why would, why can't you believe that there is a Jesus? And why can't you believe that there's a Santa Claus? Right? And so we, we just got to have the faith to know that things will be okay. You have to have that belief. You must believe that all things are possible. Anything can happen. And be grateful. And choose to live in a different space. Choose to live in a place that you want to feel not so burdened by such heavy, dark things. And that you do want to see and feel the light and you just kind of plug into all of that. You've got to, you've got to take some of the action yourself and, and just believe. I believe in you. I believe in the miracles of Christmas. I believe in miracles every single day. That's just my belief about things. You can believe what you want to believe. And you may think it's hokey pokey. You can believe whatever you want. And that's okay. Because you know what? Here's what I do know is that I have, and this is going to lead me into the last piece of this. So I've had a lot of really wonderful mentors, people that believed in me. And again, like I said, have believed in me and uplifted me. And there are people that have really crushed my heart in the process of doing that because I believed in them so much too, that, 
you know, they, they decided that, you know, for whatever reason that they just had to cut me right off. And I thought, wow, I've done that to people too. Like it has been really easy in my life to just cut off the drama, to cut off people. And I, I was like, wow, so your love for me is conditional. Because I wasn't doing what you wanted me to do. And so it became a conditional love. And instead of, you know, being that person that has been believing in me, uplifting me, inspiring me, and, you know, promoting me in all different directions, I chose not to uh, do a certain vertical in what you what you wanted me to do because I just, it wasn't, it didn't feel right to me. And instead of, you know, believing in my choice and being okay with my choice, because it wasn't your choice, you just cut me off. And I was really, really hurt by that for about a week. And then a friend of mine said something yesterday too, and and he's grown out his hair and he's getting a beard. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally didn't even recognize him. And he looks beautiful still, right? And a totally different person. And he said, you know what? He goes, I was so worried, you know, about growing out my hair and growing out a beard because he had got laid off from his job during all this. And so he's, he's having to make a major pivot and move into new positions and different, you know, in different places. And he said that since I just allowed my hair to grow out and I'm growing a beard, he's like, I got two major job offers, like serious major job offers. And it was that aha moment. And I thought, wow, it's because you were being authentic. You were being true to yourself to stop worrying and thinking about what other people are doing or thinking about you. And that's what this whole season is about. And that what this whole day or this whole message about today is, is about being true to you, being authentic to you, just doing and feel and do what's feeling right to you. And whatever that belief is for you, you be authentic to yourself. That's what you have to do. And again, there can be a lot of ups and downs and there's gonna be a lot of pivots and changes and you know all different kinds of things, but you gotta do what feels right for you. And that's my wish for you this holiday, Merry Christmas season, is to, for you to take care of you. And it is about self-care. And again, if you're having a lot of challenges, feel free to drop a line below. You can reach out, uh, private message me. I'll be more than happy to you know, get on a call with you and chat. So everyone, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me this morning at Grandma's on a Mission. Again, this is Shelly Jean. I absolutely appreciate you, my friend. Love you and thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Bye now.